Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the final client tracking capability in Process Simulate. I'm going to explain the principle, run the simulation, and demonstrate a bit how to realize it. Here we see a proof of concept demo with one final pedestal robot. As line tracking prerequisite, we need always to activate the Fanuc RCS and associate the virtual robot model which is provided by Fanuc. There is a dedicated RCS menu explaining how to. I'm not going to browse into detail. Our focus here is only on line tracking. We see multiple line tracking boundaries in the graphic viewer. Every boundary is represented by a frame. And here is the robot trajectory. The robot trajectory is divided into five different sections. Every section is an operation. It will be triggered when the section enters into its boundary. Let's look into the different elements in detail. Firstly, in robot setup. Explicit data upload. We notice a VA file, ARNTKBCK. It is dedicated to line tracking. It defines the schedule and the boundary. It contains eight line tracking schedules. Every schedule contains 10 boundaries, so in maximum, we can have up to 80 boundaries. This VA file comes from the robot backup. Let's take a look how schedules and boundaries are defined in this VA file. So in the file, we see the definition of the first schedule. It is ARNSCH1. It contains some coordinates value, for example, 1900. We will explain it later. And we see also some inbound and outbound. As mentioned, every schedule has 10 boundaries, so here we have 10 inbound and 10 outbound. Going forward, we see the definition of the second schedule. The structure is always the same. It contains some coordinates and some boundaries. This VA file contains the definition of eight schedules from one until eight. Going back to process simulate, in robot setup, I need also to upload this frame VA. It is for the tool and the base frame definition. Here the U2 and the U-frame are imported from the VA file. This work is classic. It is applicable for all Fanuc robot settings, not limited to line tracking. Here the work is already done. Now I'm going to enter line tracking settings. Thanks to the VA file which is uploaded previously, I click on import all to obtain all the eight schedules. Here only two are defined, the remaining are empty. Every schedule contains 10 boundaries. Here we see the coded value of 1900 and also the boundary of 2000. The values correspond exactly to the VA files that we have seen before. The coordinate value 1900 is for track frame and track user frame. The two frames are specific to line tracking. Regarding the track frame and the track user frame, I would like to quickly talk about the coordinate chain in Fanuc line tracking. The concept is important, and the process simulate knows how to handle it. There are four levels of transformation. Firstly, in blue, the track frame in relation to the robot base frame, based on the value here. Secondly, in green, the track frame in relation to the track base frame based on the teach distance value. Thirdly, in yellow, the track user frame in relation to the track frame based on the value here. And finally, in orange, the trajectory location in relation to the track user frame. It is how we can establish the coordinate chain. The base of line tracking is the track frame. Its x-axis must be along the conveyor direction. As mentioned, the track frame is defined relative to the robot base. It is the reason why in line tracking setting, the track frame always have a rotation of minus 90 degrees around the z-axis relative to the robot base. 
we already know that we need to firstly do explicit data upload and then import to obtain the track frame and the track user frame. But if the user wants to define the two frames differently to the VA file, he can still flexibly modify the value here in the line tracking settings and then apply. To look at the boundaries, the boundaries are related to the track frame which is also proper to the schedule. In other words, boundaries are aligned to the track frame and have an offset only along the x-axis. The offset value is defined in the boundary cases here. The boundaries are shown in the object tree as the system frame. We can take a few examples in the boundary location in the cell and verify. For example, I can measure the distance between the inbound 1 1, meaning schedule 1 and boundary 1, and the track frame schedule 1. The distance is 2000. It corresponds exactly to the value defined in the VA file. I can take another example. For example, if I measure the distance between the inbound 26, meaning schedule 2, boundary 6, and the track frame 2. The distance is 1,500. The value corresponds exactly to what I see in the line tracking settings as well. We see the value of 1,500. Boundaries are represented by frame, but it is also possible to create some geometry, for example, a section or a plane, and attach it to the frame if the user wants to. Now let's take a look into the user program. In the user program, the schedule number and the boundary numbers are defined. All locations are related to the track frame which is determined by the schedule. Many other locations in the user program will be in relative to UF0. The UF0 is associated to the schedule number which itself is indicated in the user program. I'm going to load an operation in Path Editor. As mentioned, for Fine Nuke Robot, we define U2 and U frame, but for line tracking operation, U frame is not displayed in the path editor. It is grayed out because it cannot be used for simulation. Instead, schedules and boundaries are displayed in the teach pendant. For example, this operation uses the schedule number 2 and the boundary number 2. And we need to rely on track frame and the track user frame for simulation. For every line tracking operation, there is a dedicated schedule and boundary. It has also a dedicated track frame and track user frame, which corresponds to the schedule. Please note that the line tracking is on operation level, but not on location level. Imagine that we have a robot trajectory which is partially line tracked and partially not line tracked. How are we going to handle it? We can split the whole robot trajectory and use core or core path from the main program to consume the different sections of our trajectory. In line simulation mode, we execute only the main program and block the remaining path operations. Path operations are called by the main program. I'm going to load one main program, for example. It calls the trajectories one after the other. The first and the last trajectory are not line tracked, while the remaining are line tracked. If I load the first one in teach pendant, I see that there is no line track schedule or boundary number. Now let's run the simulation and then validate the process. For the first line tracked trajectory, the location on the far right is already in the inbound, so the robot begins to track immediately. And when the lo robot location on the far left enters the inbound, the robot will begin to paint.
Similarly, for the second line tracked trajectory, when the location on the far right enters the inbound, the robot begins to track. And when the location in the other extremity enters the inbound, the robot begins to paint. And we are going to pay attention to the final section of the trajectory. If the entire line tracking trajectory is wider than the distance between the inbound and outbound, an error message will appear. This is deliberately done by Fanuc to ensure that the entire trajectory is executed and attainable. Basically, it is the first demo that I would like to share to you. Now I'm going to load another study. In Fanuc line tracking, it is also possible to modify the boundary dynamically. At the beginning of each robot path, the user defines specifically the boundary values. There are two methods. The first is by OLP. We are going to see an example. For this robot trajectory, in the OLP command, I use the command set bound. See that at the beginning of the operation, we use the instruction inbound. We need to specify the schedule and the boundary number. Here we see schedule 2 and 2. These two values should correspond to the schedule and the boundary number in the teach pendant. And then we define a position register which indicates the boundary position with respect to the robot world. To dynamically change the boundary position in x-axis along the conveyor, the value to be specified should be in y-axis. So it is the second position register that we see here. So we need to specify the value here and uh, here. In fact, the position register has six values which define x, y, z and the three rotations. But the boundary position is with respect to the robot world. Set bound command always take into account the second value, which is the y value to describe the boundary change in x axis along the conveyor. In other words, only one value among the six of the position register is taken into account, which is the second value, which is equal to 2000. In total, there are two position registers, one for inbound and one for outbound. Let's see how the simulation looks like. For the first trajectory, the inbound is located here, and the outbound is located here. So currently, the distance in relative to the truck frame is uh, identified as 3000 and 1000. So let's take a look how it changes at the beginning of the operation. You see, it is switched to 2000. And now the robot begins to track and it has to wait for the second point to enter the inbound to begin the painting. This is the first method for dynamic boundary. And we have a second method, which is to use robot module. I'm going to take an example. The set bound ARS, it is the robot module that we are going to use. It has parameter AR1 and AR2. The two parameters always apply at the second value of the position register. 
And with the command set bound, AR1 and AR2 will decide where the boundaries should be located. Now I'm going to take the second trajectory as an example. At the beginning of the operation, I simply call the robot module to define where the boundary should be located. Basically, it is the same content as the first method, except that it is easier to read and we do not have to expose the long OLP paragraph. Now let me run again the simulation and uh, as it is the second trajectory, we pay attention to these two inbound and outbound. When the first trajectory is nearly finished, we see that uh, the boundaries are switched to new location. Different offset value can be applied to different trajectory before the trajectory is executed. I'm going to stop the operation. So far, we have seen two demo studies which involve the right-hand robot. Please note that the same robot program and machine data can also be applied to left-hand robot. In this case, we go to robot setup. Robot and gun setup. And then we indicate that it is the left-hand robot. In fact, the mechanism here will allow to switch the coordinates at download and upload to mirror the robot. The information in robot setup is always applicable for right-hand robot. The conversion is done internally inside the process unit. We do not have to expose it to the user. Imagine that it is a left-hand robot operation. Here in Path Editor, it will always have the same XYZ value comparing to a right-hand robot program. But when the robot program is downloaded, the coordinate will be converted correctly and automatically. The message here is that Process Simulator can support both the right-hand and the left-hand robot. Okay, basically it is all the content that I would like to share today. I hope that it was informative for you to understand how fine your client tracking can work in Process Simulate. There is more detailed information in Fanuc ORP manual and also a how-to tutorial dedicated to Fanuc line tracking. In case of ambiguity or question, myself and also ND team will be happy to provide more clarification. Thank you for listening.